So for our second event in a row for the UFC, we've now had some controversy surrounding the rules as well as DQ versus no contest. It's just been a mess. So at UFC Vegas 21, we saw two no contest bout. We saw Eric Anders throwing an illegal knee and hitting Darren Stewart. He could not continue. And it was ruled a no contest, not a DQ. And then in the main event, we also saw the eye poke, obviously, that stopped everything in its tracks, led to a no contest, had an explanation from Mark Ratner, essentially saying, you know, if it had gone to three rounds, it would be a DQ, all of that. Matt, there's so much gray area here. What's what's your thoughts on all this? It's it's just, again, the ugly in- inconsistencies of the MMA rule set kind of rearing its head again. I don't like the idea of in in this particular instance or really when a fighter is downed and you throw a knee to the head of your opponent, I don't like that that can be categorized as an accidental strike in any way, shape or form, because it's like out of all of these striking positions um, that you can find yourself in where an illegal blow might occur. I think that's one of the most controlled positions possible. Like you have your opponent pinned down against the fence in this case, whereas, you know, last uh, at the pay-per-view, we saw Al Jermaine and Peter Yan in, in the center of the cage, but he was still, he still had him pinned down. In this case, you have him, in Eric Anders' case, and Darren Stewart, you had him pinned down, pushing against him, and there was a fence there controlling his posture as well. So he's not moving. <laughs> he's not moving. He's going to be in one spot, and you have him there, and you're supposed to know the rules as a fighter. Um, they they kind of go over it in the back. Again, like I said, when we talked about the Petrion and Aljamain Sterling thing, this rule in particular is a hot button topic because that rule changes depending on what state you're in or what country you're in. So that's that's one that gets reiterated in the back. You're supposed to know that rule, but you have him pinned down and then you you recognize the knees down, the hands are down and you still throw the strike. How is that accidental? <laughs> I don't understand how that's accidental, but this rule set allows for so many gray areas and so many decisions to be made by the referee. It, it's wild. And I don't understand how this isn't a more definitive thing. It's, it's something that really shouldn't be occurring as frequently as it has, in, at least recently, especially considering like everybody just saw the thing happen in the Peter Yon case. And then Eric Anders does it here. It's wild. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the ref goes over these things in the back to make sure you understand the rules and that you fully understand what you're getting yourself into. So for a situation like this, it, it was mind-boggling to me to see essentially the same thing play out that happened between Piotr Jan and, and Aljamain Sterling with Eric Anders and Darren Stewart. The only difference was Herb Dean didn't yell, he's down. Right, don't throw the knee. That's that's the only. But even then, that's not that much diff- of a difference, given that Jan can't understand English nearly as well as, as you know a lot of other fighters. So it's bonkers to me that that was not ruled a DQ because he was clearly down, uh, especially with Eric Anders' tweet, you know, saying making fun of Jan, saying oh he was fighting pride style. It's like, well, yeah, you went ahead and did it too, man. It's ridiculous. And then in the main event. Right, we see with Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad, he he had his fingers outstretched a fair amount. He eye pokes him. He gets a warning on it, and then another eye poke, and it's just a no contest. It's, you know, it's crazy to me when you think, again, looking in the back, they say, like, here, I'm going to go over all the rules, and this is essentially your first warning, right? That's what big John McCarthy always used to say. is like the, the back is your first warning. Once you do it out there, you should be looking at, you know, taking away points or doing various things immediately. So it, it leaves up so much to the interpretation of the referee. And we've had some crazy, crazy situations the past two events back to back. Is there anything that can really be done to fix this? I, I'm not sure. I don't see a particular way to write the rules so that it's, very, very clear, unless you said first eye poke is on an automatic warning, second one is an automatic point, that type of thing. Is that where we need to go here? I think going a lot stricter is is a potential solution because like you said, you know, you get you get you get your first warning in the back. That's really the way it should be. Once you get in there 
And if it really is an accidental sort of thing, um, then yeah, I could see giving you a warning. But also, I think these fighters don't care because they really know that they can go in there and get away with an eye poke or two. They can get away with a nut shot or two to kind of render their opponent a little less uh, effective in there. So th until the until the repercussions for throwing these strikes and doing these sorts of things are more severe, they're just going to go about what they do. Um, I'm not saying that all these guys do it consciously, but I'm thinking they would be more conscious of not doing it if they knew that the repercussions were more severe. So, yeah, you go out there, Leon Edwards gets warned for the eye thing, and the eye thing is also another one that is just weird to me, man, because when was the last event that you can recall that went through from the early prelims all the way to the main event where somebody wasn't warned about their eye pokes or keeping their hands closed or, you know, you know, hands up sort of thing. That's something that gets battered into our minds week in and week out. And yet it still happens every single event. Obviously the glove conversation comes into play. And, uh, you know, I think Trevor Whitman has a fantastic solution to that, but the UFC wants to own the technology and he's just like, eh, I don't know about all that sort of thing, but we got to figure, we got to figure these things out, man, because the eye poke one is really bad for me because it happens so often. And the, the thing that sucks about the Leon Edwards one that we just saw is that he gets warned for the eye poke, right? And then immediately when they get back to action, immediately when they get back to action, the next thing he does was throw his hand straight out like he just did. Fingers out. And Herb Dean didn't say anything about it. I'm like, come on, man. He just did what you said not to do. Like, at, it, I don't know if he just didn't see it which is possible. I could say he just didn't see it, but if he did see it and just decided to let it go, that's on Herb. Herb should have been like, time. I just told you, keep your hands up, close your fist or keep your hands straight up. You do it again. I'm taking a point. That should be it. You got to be more strict on these guys, man, because they, they feel like they can get away with stuff. And then of course the actual eye poke happens and it wasn't as straight because he was trying to, you know, hide the, hide the kick behind his left hand. But at the end of it, he kind of opens up and you kind of see his finger pull the eyelid out, which is just nasty. <laughs> and that that photo that gets just fantastic timing on that photo, by the way, by uh, Jeff Batari, fantastic photographer for the UFC. Um, just it, all of it, all of it's all bad, man. It's all bad. Eye pokes. I just wish they were never a thing. But every every single week, every single event seems to be someone getting warned for an eye poke or getting poked in the eye. It's just wild. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, something's got to be done. Um, wh whether that's, you know, using replay more to go back and look at particular fouls when they're called and saying, look, was this actually a bad foul? Was it intentional or not? Um, I, I've heard the idea thrown out there about side referees, right? Because you do have referees on the side that do look at things, but having them have the ability to send up some sort of signal, kind of like a flag in football, right? Where it's like, hey, you know, we just saw some blatant thing, like it's bad enough, we need you know, to call out on this because it's very possible that Herb did miss the fingers outstretched, right? When you're in there with those two guys, you're not going to be able to see everything. It's possible he didn't as well and just didn't call it. But either way, there's there's got to be something done to make it more strict and to have some clarity around it because otherwise this type of stuff's just going to keep happening. And when you've got people like Derek Lewis going on the Joe Rogan podcast and saying, you know, oh, I'm trying to throw a nut shot to, so I can get – you know, a breather because I wanted to have him take that time. So I've tried to kind of aim for his nuts, even though he's joking around. I'm sure people have done that. I'm sure there have been fouls thrown knowing, Hey, you know what? I can probably go ahead and grab the cage here and I'll get warned or I can go ahead and, you know, go for a little bit of a groin strike and that's okay. I'll get some time or, you know, it's, it's too gray and there needs to be something done about it in my opinion. So let us know in the comments what you feel about all this craziness with the two known contests from this weekend, the Jan uh, disqualification from last weekend. Let us know how you feel about the rule set. What do you think can be done to make it clear and make it more fair in general for all fighters and for the organizations? And make sure you hit the like, the subscribe, the bell notification button so you know when we're dropping new videos. I mean, at this point, I just I, I want curved gloves so bad. It's, you know, 
it's a it's a dream of mine. Please, please, UFC, go out there and get some curved gloves. We don't see this crap anymore. Yes, buy Trevor Whitman's. Do it. Go look at go look at him. If you guys haven't seen him, go look at the Onyx brand that Trevor Whitman owns and look at those curved gloves that he's developed for MMA. They look amazing. Those would be fantastic. They're so much better than like the uh, old like I think Strike Force had like a curved one with like the more padding on top. I believe. So much better than that. Just go look it up. I'm sure producer Jake will throw up an image of it or two here. But those are the way to go, I think. 